and I've been, I've been looking into that Bruce Lee. I'm gonna close this out. Play that uh other clip. Uh, I've been looking into that Bruce Lee shit, man. Because I've been trying to figure out, man. I mean, how can a guy like that just die? But they want you to believe it just happened. But I was looking up some more details. Excuse me. And he died in Kowloon. That's where his apartment was. And like I said, you can go on YouTube. There's videos. There's a movie. I forgot the name of the movie. But they show his place right after he died as he left it. with Food on the plate and every damn thing. And there's a video made by these guys, I think a few years ago, they went there. It was an abandoned hotel, hooker place. And that's sad to see that, you know, Bruce Lee's spot turned into that kind of shit. But I found something else because they're talking about triads and shit. So then I looked up, I think it was Kowloon, Walled City or some shit like that. It's like a very tightly congested city onto itself run by the triads and it's so densely populated. It's like horrible. So that's in Kowloon. They tore it down. And they're trying to say that that's what Bruce Lee and others in the uh, Hong Kong music and movie business had to uh, pay off or something like that. And they were saying a guy named Lo Wei, L O. W E I was in the triads and they say Bruce Lee pulled a knife and put it to his throat. That I, I've been, I've been trying to find details on why he did it and what he said about it in regards to that, but I can't find anything on it. I guess I got to buy a book, which I'm, I'm close to buying because I want to know more details. <clears throat> and I said, who the hell is low way? So I looked up low way and lo and behold, that's the guy who directed his first two movies. The, uh, trying to get the current names right what do they call them the big boss and the fist of fury formerly known as the first one big boss used to be known as the fist of fury in this country and then the chinese connection for the other one <clears throat> because you know the names in asia aren't as exciting as they are here they gotta make them a little more exciting so he was the director of those two movies bruce lee's first movies and if you notice those are his most boring movies if you noticed. And and the big boss, they didn't really let Bruce Lee get loose and do his own thing. That's why he kind of almost looked like everybody else. You know what I mean? But in the Chinese connection, that's when he had more uh, influence and wanted to do his own thing, put his own imprint on shit and his own ideas. But Lo Wei, if you notice, that's the guy in the Chinese connection or the uh, Fist of Fury with the hat on. I think he played the uh, the cop. So you've seen that guy before in many films. See, all these people surrounding Bruce Lee, they lived up until, what, 2010s and shit? Some of, a lot of them are still alive today. Like the Betty T. Pang, whatever her name, who, in all, all effects, probably poisoned the man because he had another bout, or earlier bout with poisoning, throwing up, getting passed out. He was taken to the hospital at that time. I think that was either before Enter the Dragon and during Enter the Dragon filming. And um, they were able to get him to the hospital. And the second time when he died, they said that there was a hospital five minutes away. She calls Raymond Chow instead of a, a doctor. Raymond Chow's at dinner because Bruce Lee was supposed to be at the dinner because so, they're working on the game of death. And more and more white Hollywood Jews were coming into working on the movies and working with Bruce Lee. Raymond Chow and Bruce Lee had a, a production uh, company together. Raymond Chow needed money. And he sees Hollywood Jews coming along. He knows it's a matter of time before they take Bruce Lee away. And you got to admit. The Hollywood Jews. When they did put their hands on Bruce Lee's product you gotta admit the quality was better you gotta admit that i mean out of all bruce lee's movies you know damn well the enter the dragon in the game of death 
quality wise are his best movies and Enter the Dragon you can even argue those are his best martial arts demonstrations next to it next to the uh the way of the dragon which was produced that was directed by Bruce Lee and and the music he was playing the the, the congos or the drums in the, in the music now if you combine his vision with Hollywood that's when you get your into the dragon and your game of death and you know Raymond Chow was seeing the difference in quality and he knew Bruce Lee was going to leave because he knew that's what Bruce Lee wanted any damn way but they, since they had a production joint production together they actually could have just made more a whole lot of money together but you know these people brought Bruce Lee up Plus, Bruce Lee, they say he was arrogant on the on the set. People always challenged him to fights. And he beat people's asses because they challenged him. So people fear a guy like him. And they said he was ego, uh, egotistical. And you can listen to some Bruce Lee interviews on the internet. And he talks about that. He says he needs to control his ego and that kind of... His temper and all that kind of stuff. So... She calls Raymond Chow. He comes over from dinner. He's trying to wake him up. The excuse was oh, he didn't want people seeing him at another girl's house. Okay. They said Raymond Chow or somebody else, I forgot who it was, a triad guy introduced him to that Betty T T Tai Peng or whatever her name was. She, they said she was in bed with the triads. That's why in her movie, she's always taking off her clothes and being a hoe because that's the way she is in real life. And of course, they got to seduce you with females when they want to entrap you. Oldest game in the book. Ask Sam Cooke. Or ask anybody who meets somebody online and gets jacked. You know? Oldest game in the book. So... They take him to a hospital. I think it's about a half hour or something away, even though he was already dead. Swelling on the brain. He was throwing up before. All that adds up. Yeah, that's clear cut poisoning. That's not some allergic reaction to the pill that she gave him, which was. The, I saw it. I finally got my hands on it. I still don't know how to pronounce it. Equi equigesic or something like that. Half aspirin on one side, half tranquilizer which is a muscle relaxer on the other side. It's kind of weird. And they try to say that's what creates swelling of the brain, but the truth is they had different reasons why Bruce Lee died. They said, I might put this on a separate thing if it goes too long, but they said, <clears throat> He was allergic to hashish or some some shit like that. Then they said it was the pill. Then they said he had a medical condition where he, he removed the uh, sweat glands and shit like that. A whole bunch of different reasons. You know, when they start talking that drug shit, that's when they try to put you down and say, you're the cause. But, you know, all these years I hadn't realized that the game that the Into the Dragon was his last film that he actually did. But the game of death, he was working on that before the Enter the Dragon. And you saw how that was looking. And then his other ideas he had up his sleeve. You know his movies are going to get better. See, I think the rest of them, they were getting jealous because if he left for Hollywood, number one, his movies and his skills were so much better than everybody else. It's not to say the other guys didn't have skill, but they had more fundamental Kung Fu skill while Bruce Lee's was different unique of course influenced by the American black man Muhammad Ali in particular <clears throat> that's why with all the Bruce Lee imposters that's why you can see none of them ever really came close to being like him and of course he was born in the U.S. And he was out here in the U.S., so, you know, that's, he had a different experience. So, and the other thing is, I've been looking into things because I was I was always curious about one thing. 
which is Jackie Chan, because you know over, over all these videos I've been talking about, I've been bringing up the martial arts shit with Sam Mohong, Yuen Bao, and Jackie Chan. I told you how they were stuntmen and a whole bunch of movies, backups. On screen with Bruce Lee and Into the Dragon. And I also read that that flip that Bruce Lee did in Into the Dragon, he didn't do the flip. But it looked seamless, though. But he didn't do it. Uh, the guy that you'll see in... I think it's Jackie Chan's Dragons Forever. He played the gang, the gang leader with the cigar and the big ears. That, that's the guy that did the flip, they said, for Bruce Lee. So I'm like, damn, I thought Bruce Lee could, did a flip, too. So I thought he was able to do that. Some people say he was able to do it, but insurance reasons is why he didn't do it. And then they also said, I hate the... I'm like, man, I don't know if movies could be that good, but they claim he didn't do that front kick and into the dragon, that flip. Flip kick. I'm like, damn. I mean, when you, I, I've been telling you about Cynthia Roth Rock. She's supposed to be a karate, was supposed to have been a karate expert, but for all the shit that was skillful, they put a stunt man, literal stunt man, in for. Her. Find that weird. But so far, that's the only thing that they said a stunt man came in for Bruce Lee on on the flips can't believe he couldn't do flips because I, I keep watching that shit over and over I'm like I can't see the stuntman most of those times <clears throat> you can see the stuntman easily <laughs> in those movies but so he did the Enter the Dragon they rap some guy tried to fight him on the uh, well he did fight a guy a stuntman They got pictures of it, but they say no film footage. For all we know, they might have it. Just hidden it away or something or lost it. So he wrapped the movie. Then he was supposed to meet Raymond Child to finish up the game of death. Then he dies. So. The main point. Is Jackie Chan. As you know, everybody knows now that Jackie Chan was a stuntman. And a couple of Bruce Lee movies, Into the Dragon, and I think the, uh, I don't know if it's Way of the Dragon, I think it was The Fists of Fury. So Jackie Chan, he, I think he was 10 years younger than Bruce Lee or something like that, 10, 12 years younger. A stuntman. If he had not been Jackie Chan, he would have been less known as one of those background uh, fighters than the guys you've seen get the screen time, <laughs> you know? And everybody agrees that Jackie Chan is not really a martial artist per se. He's more of an acrobat with a little bit of uh, martial arts because that, if you notice in his movie, he doesn't really give you devastating martial arts skills. It's mainly stunts and flips and stuff. I mean, he could he could throw down when needed, but you know he, that's not his main thing. So he comes out. I forgot the first movie. I just forgot the name of it, but I'm sure you could look it up. But he comes out with his with a movie starring in the movie. I'm like, how the fuck you go from background guy to as soon as Bruce Lee dies, now you're starring in a movie. That shit didn't make sense. But then he was down with that Low Way guy. And the movie was directed by Low Way. And I think Golden Harvest. And I told you that logo is a swastika, by the way. And what I didn't know was that Golden Harvest was a fledgling company until Bruce Lee put him on the map. Bruce Lee did a whole lot of shit for only a guy who only lasted for four and a half movies. That's fucking crazy. And I, I said this before. Oh, fuck. I always feel these fucking waters too fucking high. But I, I said this before in another uh, thing. I said if Bruce Lee, when you think about it, it's kind of crazy. Damn. Hold on a second. It's kind of crazy, but Bruce Lee... 
did four and a half movies. Spill the shit all the way in here. Bruce Lee did four and a half movies. Died almost 50 years ago. Sorry. <clears throat> Died almost 50 years ago. Jackie Chan did about, I'm sure he had done a, at least 100 movies, whether he was starring in them or not. And he started 50 years ago. But Bruce Lee is still more influential and more popular than Jackie Chan is. That goes to show how bad Bruce Lee was. You've been dead that long and only did four and a half movies. Martial arts based. And you're still the most popular martial artist of all time. That's something else. It's like, who else? Like Sam Cooke. Who else? Uh... John Lennon dies, you know, still popular. James Dean. Wasn't there a rapper? I'm not saying Tupac or Biggie, but I guess you could say, I guess you could throw Tupac in there. I mean, that's influence. That's why, and JFK too, you could throw him in there too, because he got shot down and he's still popular. You could argue that he, if he had lived, he may not have been popular, you know? You just never know. And Bruce Lee, you know, that's the gamble. You don't know if he, he would have gotten played out. Probably wouldn't have. You know, he probably would have been making movies up until the 2000s. And he probably would have died naturally by now, maybe. But, you know, people couldn't match him. Hong Kong, they get jealous. The, the Asians, they, they get jealous. They want to kill. That's how they do it. So they say Jackie Chan was tied to the triads as well. So if that's the case, that would explain how Jackie Chan all of a sudden went from background stuntman to starring in the movie right after Bruce Lee goes. Because why would they choose Jackie Chan? I mean, he didn't really exhibit any stunning martial arts. And as a matter of fact, you look at, listen to interviews on Jackie Chan on Bruce Lee on YouTube. My man got a bunch of different stories about Bruce Lee that nobody can very really verify. People get jealous. They want a person's spot. That's what you got to understand. Whether it's Tupac, Biggie, or rappers who stayed alive, like LL Cool J, who had to fight and battle a lot of people. And others that got this, Karis, one, MC Shan. You know, you got a lot of people who want people's spot. And some people go as far as the killing. Because they knew they couldn't beat Bruce Lee's ass. So poison. And the reason why they opt for poison, because, you know, gunshots are pretty obvious. Some people say that he got beat up. Because if you look at his uh, picture in his casket, he does have a scratch on his face. Who knows? I mean, people are still alive. They can tell the, the, the story. I know that Betty T Tai Ping, whatever her name is, she I think she told a new new version of the story recently. But it goes to show they didn't care. They cared, cared more about themselves than what Bruce Lee can produce. And Jackie Chan has had a long career. Now, somebody should ever come out and say that Jackie Chan... Actually, he did have something. That's what they're saying. Jackie Chan has something to do with Bruce Lee getting killed or dying. Some even allege that he was out there and helped beat him up. That's what they claim. <laughs> I don't think I, I, I doubt if that happened, but that's what they claim. I'm sure there's something slick about Jackie Chan getting from background stunt guy unknown to starring in the movie. That just you start off stuntman, uh, supporting actor co-star star and a lot of people 
in action movies, they don't even go from co-star to star. They stay in co-star mode for throughout their career, which can still bring you a great career. But Jackie Chan goes from background stuntman to star. Samo, I'm sure his weight probably, you know, held him back a little bit. He was the only one of the, the trio actually on screen with Bruce Lee. So he has, to me, he has the best uh, 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 thing on his resume because he actually is the one that's on screen fighting the guy. So with that, Sam, okay, okay, I can understand him. That's a supporting role right there. What he did. But in that same movie, Into the Dragon, Jackie Chan was a stunt guy. That's what he called himself, a stunt guy. I guess that's what you can call a background uh, fighter, stunt guy. The only way to find, to really see him is to freeze the frame, really. So, <laughs> so how do you do that, go from that to star while Samuel's on screen and he's not a star aside from his weight even you and bow didn't go and become a star standalone star so it sounds like bruce lee had to go in order to bring somebody else up that wanted bruce lee's spot that's what it sounded like because everything that jackie chan ended up doing were things that Bruce Lee had in his mind. Because Bruce Lee tried to penetrate the American market. One, two, three times. 70s, 80s, 90s. 70s, he was making straight up martial arts movies. Then towards the end, trying to make some crossover type shit. Then in the early 80s, he tried, I forgot the name of that movie he made taking place in the early 1900s, which I didn't like because it wasn't really Kung Fu. And he had a, another one like that too that was better. Operation Project A, I think it was called. Then, <clears throat> that didn't work out. Didn't work out for him in the 80s. And most of his 80s movies, that's why I've been hunting them down, they all took place they were off of uh, the Asian markets. I don't think they did did, did anything in the United States. Asian and, and British markets. <clears throat> and the, a lot of them aren't bad. But again, with most of his movies, he's hardly doing martial arts. You know what I mean? Because I, I guess he just wanted to be a movie star. Bruce Lee wanted to be a movie star too, but... You know, he had plans. I think that movie I told you, The Man from Hong Kong, uh, with my man that just died. And Samuel was in that. I think Bruce Lee was supposed to have been in that movie. Because that was the idea he had. He wanted to be, do the movie with George Lazenby. That would have been cool with Bruce Lee. See, that would have expanded him and made him more action instead of and less kung fu. While the guy... I forgot my man's name, Jimmy Wu or uh, YU, or whatever his name is. Uh, I don't know what his martial arts training was, but it didn't look like he had much to me. So he did more action than martial arts. But they said that movie didn't do well, but it wasn't bad, though. I liked it. Matter of fact, I think I liked it enough that I'm, I'm going to buy it. That's what I'm going to do. Well, Spice is right, that is. Uh, <laughs> And um, Jackie Chan, all, all the shit he was doing was what Bruce Lee wanted to do, try to get the crossover appeal to the, what they call Western markets. 80s passed them by. And then the 90s come along. Shit, when the hell did Rush Hour come? I forgot the year. Was that 90s or 80s? I don't feel like looking at it on this phone because I don't want to mess this up just in case. But let's say if it was the 90s, you know, I know Rumble in the Bronx. Yeah, I think that was the 2000s, early 2000s, I think. <clears throat> yeah, because it was on DVD. It's 2000s. But his Rumble in the Bronx and all that kind of shit, which I still didn't see because it looked like it was going to be weak. You know, he kept trying to come up with these kind of movies. 
to have mass appeal in this country. And again, what do I always tell you? Like Bruce Lee, it took the black man to make him unique because the black man is what broke Jackie Chan in, in this country. Chris Tucker, he made Jackie Chan get what he wanted. Mass appeal in the U.S. See, no matter how you want to flip it, the black American is always making it happen for everybody else. But everybody else always makes sure that nothing happens for us. That's why you got to put the weed down and other drugs and alcohol so you can concentrate better and go to war better. Then you can stop getting used. That's why a lot of the artists and movie stars from back in the day, see, even from 100 years ago up to 100 years ago, it's always drugs and alcohol. That's how they control you. Red Fox, you name them. All of them on cocaine and shit and end up broke. Right back where they started. It's fucked up. Nothing lasts. That's why you got to, once you get a hold of money, that's why I say if we get some goddamn reparations, goddamn it. You better start buying you some property. Especially if we're totally tax exempt. One thing I can say, you always got to have a place to lay your head, if nothing else. Car can come last. Always have a place to stay first. So, yeah, that Bruce Lee thing's pretty interesting. I've been looking into that. It's more than clear to me that they killed that man. It's fucked up. Some people say that they set Sam Cook up to get killed too, but I, I don't believe that they set up the entire thing because that's just not possible. I, I just don't believe it's possible. <clears throat> for. And I still got that book. I still didn't read because it it's so fucking thick and way too detailed. You get lost. <laughs> I'm going to go back to it after a while. Still don't understand why they don't have a fucking Sam Cooke movie. Why can't they make it? Why, why why are people afraid to touch it? I don't understand that. But, um, because I was trying to find one. I'm like, over the years, I'm like, I would have thought that they would have had a Sam Cooke movie. They said he was the second biggest artist on his label after Elvis. That sounds pretty big to me. <laughs> I mean, but no movie. We got Elvis movies, but no Sam Cooke. Now, I believe they did set Sam Cooke up with that hoe. And if they didn't do it, maybe she did it on her own. But she obviously took him to that hotel, motel, where she obviously knew the lady. So that's obviously a setup right there. But see, Sam Cooke let his dick guide his life which ended his life like a lot of guys. Like my man uh, from the Titans. It's fucked up. You gotta think, man. You gotta think. Just gotta think. But again, it was meant to be with Sam Cooke one way or the other. But in a way, him dying made him legendary. And that's what happened with Bruce Lee. It made him legendary. Iconic. Now, if Jackie Chan dies tomorrow, will he be a martial arts icon? I don't even think he is. I don't think he ever was. Because when you think about it, most of his movies, like I said, especially after the 1980, there was very few martial arts going on in him. He made the bulk of his real martial arts movies in the 70s. But after 1980, they're basically action movies with martial arts mixed in here and there. Now, a lot of them I liked, a lot of them I didn't like. And I admire the man's bravery doing his own stunt work, especially on that movie, uh, I think it was Police Story 4 or 5, one of them. 
where they scaled the goddamn skyscraper. I thought they used stuntmen on that shit, or, or I was thinking maybe they didn't really actually scale the skyscraper and ride a bike down the skyscraper. Because I said, who the fuck would want to do that? But they did it. I said, God damn it, there's a limit to how, what kind of stunts I'm going to do on the movie. And that's that's one of them. I'll be damned. Because me, I'm not trusting no goddamn rope. <laughs> right, I'm right down the skyscraper. But again, I admired the man's bravery. And it's cool that he did do his own stunts. And I guess he wanted to keep that aspect of his career alive. Because, you know, he's like, hey, this is what I did. Why not? But if my man had a hand in killing Bruce Lee, then I say, God damn, Jack, Jackie Chan. Just like uh, George Bush. Man had a hand in killing JFK. Can't respect them after that. Can't respect them. So this is an hour and five minutes on my talking alone, let alone playing the clips. So I might put this in uh, part two. That's, I think I might chop this up because... Um, if I play the clips, it's probably going to add another half hour to it. So I'll probably chop it up. So with that, hopefully the sound quality is clearer this time and louder. I see it in the red, so I wish they had some weird way to limit possible distortion. I guess the only way is, is to be quiet, I guess. So with that, I'm out.